everyone, Joshua Hamlin back here for day two of live streaming at Philly Breakfast here in Philadelphia. And I'm joined for the beginning of the live stream here by our... Uh, I'll handle it from here. It's okay, awesome. okay. Classic plastic here, back by popular demand. Yeah, exactly. You just loved him so much yesterday, we had oh, to bring him of, back. Of course, of course. <laughs> so what city are we in? We're in Philadelphia. What happened in Philadelphia a few months ago? I think they won uh, some big sporting event. What was that? Uh, Oh, was it a Super Bowl? I think it was. I think it might have been. Kind of a big deal around kind here, Kind of a little right? bit, a little bit. A little bit. So, my friend, hopefully he's still my friend, <laughs> Victor from Eclipse Graphics. We all love Victor. Yeah. Victor is an artist. <laughs> he made something special up for the show. So, can you see that? Is it coming up good? Yes. So, so you describe it. Okay, you so we've got four different... Super Bowl Philadelphia minifigs here, and there's all different designs. Shout out to Eclipse Graphics and Victor here. He does incredible work. And so you've got the guy with like one glove on one hand. You've got like face paint. That's full. Don't say one guy. That's a Philly hero now. Come on. <laughs> okay. There's you know, Rocky. There's in, my Foles. in my defense, I'm not from Philly. So, you know. <laughs> what city are you from? Indiana. I apologize. I do too. I, uh, <laughs> no. It's crazy. Anyway, these, these mini things are incredible. Victor does amazing printing. The so, detail is ridiculous. Yes, you it probably, is. Like on the sleeves, here. everything. It's just great work. So can you can buy these here at the show. Can you buy them online as well? That's a question to email Victor. <laughs> yes. Neither of us know that. Dot com. But you can buy them at the show. And we just wanted to show this off because obviously they're related to Philadelphia winning the Super Bowl. And I think we can all be happy that they beat the Patriots. So, oh. you know, no matter where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> Boo, Patriots. <laughs> We just lost some New England fans there, but that's okay. Uh, really? Are you worried about that? <laughs> Not really, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we just wanted to show those off and give a shout-out to Victor and these awesome minifigs. So you can pick them up here at the show. I don't know if they'll be for sale online. You can check into that and contact Victor. He even Limited some, run. He even printed some tiles there. No, sir. All right, so the, uh, the EP again. Yes. I got some guests lined up, so okay. uh, you run your mouth and I'll go handle I'll the I'll do that. So, yeah, we're going to have some more great guests joining us today uh, throughout the live stream. Uh, I don't know how how long we'll go for exactly here, but we also have the, the chat open as well. So, once again, feel free to uh, sound off in the chat about anything you like, things you don't like, what, whatever you want to say, any questions you might have, we'll do our best to answer them throughout our live stream going on at the show. But you can see, once again, very busy public day here for day two of Philly Brick Fest. So this will be the, the last day of the show. But it looks like there's a lot of people still streaming through to check out all of the awesome stuff that we have going on here. We've been able to shoot a lot of great content so far, so definitely keep an eye out for that in the, the coming weeks and months on Beyond the Brick. We'll have a lot of in-depth interviews with some of the great builders. You can see some of their work displayed behind me here. It's it's really incredible stuff. So lots of, lots of fun activities going on. I think we'll have some some great builds for you as well today. I mentioned yesterday the world record breaking Guinness World Record uh, firewalk on Lego bricks. So that was a very exciting event, and just editing that video last night, working on getting that out as soon as possible because that was a really cool event that we want to show everyone as soon as we can. Looks like we've got some some folks coming up here. So just <laughs> bringing some builds up here. Okay. There we go. Got a few different builds. Okay, awesome. So you can have a seat here. Make sure you just sit close to the mic. Make sure everybody can hear you, and then we'll we'll talk about your builds here. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. So you can start by introducing yourself, telling people a little bit about you, and then let's am, check out the builds. I'm Robbie from Robbie Blocks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, most of you know that. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Now, what do, we, what do we have here? Uh, this is my custom coffee shop modular that I built. This was the first custom modular I built. I was thinking, hey, Lego has a, a, a cafe. They have a cafe. They even got a pastry store, a bakery, I mean. And they have a Parisian restaurant, which is a restaurant, I mean. But um, I said, why not they have a coffee shop? So I decided to design this coffee shop here which i really want to make sure it looks good from all angles mm -hmm. and if we take off the parapet everything i designed here was just by me no inspiration needed this is the interior for the second floor should i raise it up yeah yeah there you go oh, perfect oh. 
Okay. <laughs> Watch the mic. Yeah. There you go, so they can see inside yeah. there. There's a couch. There's also three Easter eggs for the Batman movie and uh, the Ninjago uh, Time Blade and the Adventures, uh, the Adventure sets from the 80s, mm -hmm. which is the dinosaur one. And Those are some great sets. Yeah, this was the studio apartments. And here is the actual coffee shop. So we have mugs on display, and like any other, um, like any other coffee shop, you don't drink from those mugs, but they have a nice disposable cup for you. And the oh man, I got I got to stop bumping. I'm sorry. It's all but, good. Uh, yeah, but uh, the alley, I decided to make it look nice because compared to other modulars, they're quite bland from Lego. So I tried to have something interesting with the stonework. The stonework seems yeah. out to me. I really like yeah. that. Yeah. I, everybody likes this as much as the front of the modular. I personally like the back of it, just the way it looks. And it's based off neo greek architecture, too. And I also want to give another uh, use to the nice gold ring elements, which have been used, I think, in most of the Lord of the Rings sets and a few... Um, Ninjago, uh, the Temple of Air Jitsu. I was going to say Ninjago City. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Very cool. I like that. So, kind of continuing the modular line almost. Yeah, and, and I, expanding next on that. year, I want to have like a whole entire modular, custom modular city. I have like years of work ahead of designs. I plan to do a hotel, even a Lego store, because I see <laughs> stuff on YouTube. But it just screams out Lego. I want to think of something maybe based off my Lego store mm -hmm. in Manhattan. So, I because I go to one Lego store in Manhattan, so I'm thinking to do something based off that one. Yeah. yeah. So, how did you decide on this color scheme then, with with kind of the red brick look? Well, I live in Brooklyn, New York, so I live around a, probably a few of these uh, like buildings, and I just decided, you know, I should go ahead and like have a nice brick brick building because it would look very nice, like. Most of the, I think they're called row houses or mm -hmm. or brownstoners, I meant to say. Yeah, so it looked a lot like brownstoners. And I just saw nobody really had something like that in the modular theme. So it's very much inspired by the local architecture that you kind of grew up around yeah. and would recognize as the, the local buildings for you. Yeah, like but the, but the plot twist is um, in my neighborhood, we, we have a lot of stores on the bottom. So I try my best to make it based off some apartments, you can say. And then like store on the bottom, apartment on the top. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, then what else do we have here? I can um, move that to the I side. Can, all right. Yeah, sure. Sure. We'll move that over here. This was actually one of my very first mocks that I actually do. I do a few mocks, but they're not... They're nothing really amazing. I'm, I used to, on my channel, I'm like the review guy, which now I'm stopping to do. I want to be more of the guy that does that both stuff. Sure. So this is my 1980s house. I worked on this in July, and this was something that was I'm really proud of that I made. And if we pop off the roof, I see the interior as simple, although all the kids here at the convention really get a kick out of it. So we have a hallway in the middle, in the, in the corner of it, I mean and a bathroom between it and a bedroom with a brick, uh, brick built clock, which I can't take out, but you could probably see on camera. And if we take off the porch roof, um, we have the- I like we, how the porch roof is, is removable as well. Yeah, I decided to, and I made sure the pillars were solid as well, because they, they were starting to like break away. And I also tried to make a U out of the side of the fence, so it will <laughs> up. I broke it. It's okay, but it's um, Lego. That happens. Yeah, but um, I tried to make it like a curve on the side for the fence, so it, that was pretty interesting to do. And I have like freshly baked cupcakes, a bit of a fireplace. There's not really that much you could fit on a 16 by 16. But I based it off the 1980s houses where it was the red and white houses. Mm -hmm. So I want to give like a modern take on an on an old classic. Yeah, yeah. that's a great great color scheme. Thank you. All the little details in there, like the fireplace and everything. Very cool. So that's another modular house. And yeah. then... Then this is something that almost everybody is knows about at the convention. This is not a modular house. It's not. It's nothing <laughs> modular. More of a display piece. It's, a, it's Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet. Now, all the stones here are are um, removable. I've been talking so much today with a lot of people that ask questions, how long it took to build it. So I don't, I forgot the how, what the stones are. So if I go check here on my phone, 
Sure. You got some, uh, some notes here? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually got the actual oh, perfect. images. Yeah. So we have the mind gem, which is the red one here, the reality gem, and then this would have been the power gem, and then this is the time gem, and this is the soul gem, which I got today thanks to a friend who helped me out. <laughs> perfect. And then here on the thumb, this would be the space gem. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I tried my best to go with like the way the movie one is set up, because in the comics, he has the, it looks like the fake one that's in the movies, but it's in the comics and it's in a different pattern. But instead, I decided to just um, go ahead and make it a comic book style, but it would work with the way the movie is. Is it actually wearable? Uh, no, I, got, I would love to make a V2. I mean, this it's like solid here, it's hollow here, and hollow as well, but mostly here it's solid, because I built it from the middle and I kind of built around it. And I also added these dark green just to be jewels because it kind of looked a little bland yellow. Mm -hmm. And I also made this to be uh, like the best excuse to do those Legoland statues that is like studs up. And it's very simple, yet it still shows a lot of these. Right. And you even got, is there lighting in the front? Yes, I actually have. The battery's running out, but it's still lit, lit up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, very neat. Thanks for bringing these models over. It was, it was great chatting with you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. And before you leave, real quick, if people want to see your work online, is there, is there anywhere you want to direct them? YouTube, Instagram. These aren't these aren't online yet because I've been mostly taking a break from YouTube. But um, I'll, I'll, I'm hosting with Philly, but um, I'll be posting these soon. Okay, yeah. so that's Robbie Blocks. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> well. Get these moved out of the way then i think we have the next builder There's ready so more houses too like our vision bricks modern house very cool yeah um, that's i'll have to find that. yeah that's fine yeah i'll come back sure oh shameless plug victor, <laughs> victor. <laughs> this is this is the adverts in between each each episode <laughs> that is correct <laughs> okay we got the next builder if you want to come on up here Very cool. So yeah, you make sure to sit close here and get close to the mic. Make sure everybody can hear you. So, all right. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm from Nashville, Pennsylvania. Um, so what I brought here is a chess set that I made a couple of years ago. Uh, the neat thing about this, I think, is that there's actually no studs at all showing anywhere. It's all completely smooth. <laughs> Most chess sets you see, they have little studs in the middle where you put your pieces on but i just don't think it looks as clean when you look at this at an angle you don't see any studs at all it's very nice and smooth um the base like the round stuff the edge is just simple tiles there's nothing special there uh, but i think the fun part is that this board is actually a separate piece itself the whole thing just kind of comes wow. up like that and you can put different lego figures on top of the you know the pieces and whatnot, whatever you choose. I got a little Darth Maul here and <laughs> Darth Vader. You can put them king and queen, whatever you want. So you can switch stuff in and out and customize yep, it. Yep, yep. Okay. Right now I just have the standard king and queen because, you know, it's what you normally expected of a chess set. And it just kind of fits in there nice and naturally. It's just snug. And there again. I like that. So you got a lot of the studs not on top type building because you, you obviously said you didn't want that. Right. Studs pointing out. So, how did that come together? Did you have to experiment to get all that down? Yeah, a lot of experimentation, just trying different parts uh, in like random colors just to see how it all fit. And luckily, it all just fit down. I was expecting to make like a hinge, like something like that to come out, but it just fit right in there. And I was like, okay, that works for me. Mm -hmm. and I didn't change a thing. When you move a piece, does it stick into the holes? Yep. There? So, underneath is a little, little technique piece that doesn't lock in, it just kind of sticks in. They don't go anywhere, no matter how much I shake it, it's not going anywhere, so it actually works a little bit better than normal chess pieces, or chess boards. Uh, as I said before, the king and the queen, they actually come off, so you can put whatever you want on the king or the queen as your uh, sort of representative. Um, the other thing is on the side here, I have a little place to oh, put your dead, che dead, dead chess pieces, just so you're not laying around. And it just snugly fits back in there, so you don't really see it too well. Kind of sneaks in there as well. I love that. So, yeah, just yep. you can pull it out. Uh, just stick yep. your pieces in there. You go along. Yep. Have Most you played part. actual chess games? Uh, yeah, board? a couple times. I don't have many friends that play chess because <laughs> I always beat them. So 
They don't and want no to one play. wants to play anymore. No one wants to play when I was <laughs> At least you have a fancy time. looking board. This I do. I can look at it at least and <laughs> show it to people. Um, yeah, the, the pieces are just things that just fold around with different parts. Just made them look as best as I could of the actual, you know, chess pieces themselves. The bishops are the weirdest ones because, I don't know, they're just hard to make a round, mm -hmm. curvy figure. It's got the, the pointy hat. Yeah, kind of exactly. It's, it's very difficult to get that. I think the knights look the coolest, though, with the ears. Especially teeth, I think, from dinosaurs or something okay. like that. I think it looks like it has ears. I like some of the classic, uh, like, whole yeah. characters. Yeah, just stuff there. I had random, randomly around from the night sets, you know, back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about it. The nice thing is everything actually fits inside, too. You can take all the pieces off and put them in, so you can just carry it as one giant thing and not have to worry about separating the pieces in different bags and all like that. Just, they all go right inside, which is nice. Sure, that works well. So have you built other board games out of Lego or is no, this the only one? No, this is the only one I made. Actually, when I came here two years ago, I was inspired and wanted to make something like this. And so I did. Um, now I want to try to make a battleship game. You know, like the, the battleship with right. the pieces. Okay, yeah. That's what I want to make next. So I just got to think about how I'm going to do that and Maybe use the same sort of technique like I did here to get that smooth blue surface, but we'll see how that goes. I, of course, you put the ships in like that. I love the smooth tiled look to the whole thing. Yeah. I think that makes the builds look so nice and That's going to make a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, very neat. Thanks for bringing that up. Yep, thank you very much. Chatting with me. Absolutely. So, do you have anywhere online that people can check out your builds? or? Nope. Okay, so just just come to the, you got to come to the show then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Any other it. shows besides this, this Philly show that you'll be at, or is this pretty much it? No, it's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, I'm around here, so that's sure. all I come to. Makes sense. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It's right. a great build. I thank appreciate you. it. Well, yeah, there you go. So we got some, some great stuff for you guys here. I hope you're enjoying the look at these builds. It looks like we've got some more builders ready over here. <laughs> Who do we have for us? <laughs> all right. Uh, are you putting people to sleep or, you know, that's I, I think, entertaining? I think we've got maybe one or two viewers that are still awake. Uh, all right. <laughs> Try not to put them to sleep. I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, here's the chat. Maniac. Let's go, Maniac. What do we have here? Maniac for bricks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm just glancing at the chat here, so if you Good. want to introduce right. yourself to everyone. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. This is Maniac for Bricks, also known as Joey. Um, I, I'm, I really, I'd love like trying to build all the different kinds of mocks and see what things I can do. Try to different building techniques, and I'm also a really big collector, so I try to find all different kinds of things throughout Lego history, outside of the minifigs and and sets and things. Just most oddball stuff that most people wouldn't even care for or just be very basic. If that has a Lego label on it, I will be looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It looks like yeah. you're on your brick badge. You even have some interesting stuff there. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, one of the promotional bricks. Somebody handed me this before the weekend and also has a maniac uh, from when I grew up, the uh, convention that uh, Lego hosted for that. Mm -hmm. Well, such, such a cool brick badge. Here's here's a, here's an addition oh, for yeah, you. There you go. Need to I add that, that one go right, well right there. <laughs> good spot for it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, what what builds did you bring then? So for today, I have a whole bunch of builds that I, it, these are ones that even though I try different styles, these are ones I've been more cemented. I've always wanted to do a Lego bust. I've seen a few times and tried every once in a while, but this is probably one of the the better examples I've been able to finish. This is based on Bart Simpson from The Simpsons. It actually started out as being Homer Simpson with trying to get the right scale for the eyes and the nose. And I just thought it would be a better idea if I just worked at it from Bart's perspective. Yeah. yeah, so when you're working on a sculpture like this, obviously you're making on like a character. What kind of stuff, like source material do you use and how, what kind of techniques do you right. do? So it's... I haven't entirely used just the minifigure for that. I'd be way too small to see, but I have tried um, looking through Google images, try to blow up high res images to see like if I can get the right angles for how pieces go together. So I get the right sloping along lips and also making sure how, like how the hair can like slick back but also be pointed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Did you have other stuff as well you wanted wanted to show? Yeah, so this is probably one of the better examples for the sculptures that I've done. And I've moved on from there to try to do something. This was about two years ago and shown up through a few conventions over time based on Little Shop of Horrors. It's a vignette of Audrey II in the, in the plant shop. What catches my eye well, right off with this build, there's a lot of great stuff, but the mm -hmm. flooring is really neat. So talk about how you achieved that yeah, technique. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> 
This is a technique I happen to learn over time with a friend of mine who's a, who's really into headlight bricks. Uh, most of how these are made are headlight or Erling bricks. Just connect together, like with the recessed stud, it helps with them staying very flush. So I tried to get as many of these as possible to make a checkerboard pattern in general, and it was the second inspiration that led me to building this. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. really great. And then the play at work, talk about some of that and how that came together. Yeah. So most of the inspiration that I had for this was based on the plant face. So most people have said that looks really accurate to Audrey. And it's actually from uh, Hero Factory series. That, like one of the later ones, they had these pieces that would connect together tr in almost triangular way mm -hmm. to make a cocoon. I just turned that sideways. So I'm like, huh, that looks familiar. <laughs> now, Hero Factory had some crazy pieces in there that you could yeah. use for that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's it's always a wonder for me when I get to see like Bionicle or Hero Factory or those just oddball themes. Um, integrated into a Lego mock, and I was happy to share some of that here. Even like the tentacle piece that's in here, it's it's actually an easy fit, so that if I need to transport this somewhere, I can you know, disassemble it, and it'll fit very flush inside of them mm -hmm. into a container. But that was also from that series. Perfect, then what other vignettes did you bring here? So from this, I wanted to try to develop more uh, based on 80s movies, 70s movies, and the next one I had in mind was Something I had to make an extra display for with so many figures that were associated with it. This is based on uh, the movie Rocky Horror Picture Show from 1975. It's um, it's more adult, so ask your parents about it. <laughs> but for, for, for what's shown here, very nice, very clean. I tried to be sure it wasn't going to be uh, an issue for the show. There you show. go. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. What scenes and characters did you have here? So... One of my favorite parts of the movie is whenever they're using the laboratory. It has like a lot of uh, inspiration from like Frankenstein monsters type of stories and things like that, but very quirky and very musical. So I tried to incorporate that and I had to go frame by frame through the movie, watching it a few times in order to get the right details in here for like the statues that they have across the room, the tank in the middle, the... Um, like having the right height for the railing so I could fit figures up top here and also the machine along the side to get like I had to go detail with that just to be right and how to make a red outline along it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then you some more mini things over here. Yep, so there's a lot of different characters that are in the movie and I tried as best as I could to replicate most of them through mi through mini figure form. All of them are all legitimate pieces, nothing printed or painted over. It's one mostly from the collectible minifigure series, so I swapped those in and That out. is a source of some great pieces when you're trying to recreate kind of accurate minifigs based on movies or TV shows that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, definitely. I wasn't sure exactly which ones I was going to use through the scene, but I have enough room here that I could adjust it however I want to. And it's a little tight for space in here, but it still had enough. I had to go to the, the Lego store about a week ago to pick up a lot more of the pink bricks. Even though I designed it in advance of building it, I realized, oh, I kind of don't have enough of this. <laughs> but for the figures, a lot of them I had to go through two or three different designs to get it right or as accurate as I could based on the movie. So yeah. for those of you who are fans of Meatloaf, we got him here too. <laughs> there you go. He, he, all was, sorts of stuff. Yeah, he was featured in the movie as one of the characters. <laughs> Perfect. And then uh, the final vignette you have here. So yeah, this is this is amazing how I was able to go further beyond this and create even a third thing for a series. And this is based on the Breakfast Club. But more than the credit scene, that's just very iconic. It's something I, I even have a t-shirt somewhere about just, just Bender with the fist. Up. <laughs> and this one is actually a bit of a challenge. It looks very simple, but it took me a lot of work to get the force perspective in it. To get the idea that this is, these are bleachers further back in the background, I went through making the background a few times in order to like get some of the clouds and trees detail. But it was a little difficult with my pieces, so I just decided to make it more, you know, open like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the force perspective can be really tricky because obviously you want it, you know, big enough to be recognizable, but at the same time not so big that you lose that perspective of it. Right. And with the and with a confined space like this, I can only bring it back so far, and that's 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 the thing that I like. I usually try building on eight by sixteen or sixteen by sixteen like this to try to challenge myself. If I want to get a certain detail on there, what parts do I need, and how do I build it to to incorporate it? Yeah.
Well, excellent work. I think there's some great models. Thanks for coming over here and chatting with yep. me. I really I, appreciate it. Thank you for having and me on. If people want to see your work online and more of your models, where can they check you out? So I do have a YouTube channel, Maniac Four Bricks. I am also uh, currently working on a book with talking about a lot of those, you know, odd things that I collected over time and trying to give more historical perspective with them. So. Um, <laughs> so, so look for an upcoming book called Bizarre Lego. It's going to be full of pictures and descriptions of all different kinds of Lego things and little known trivia from, you know, our favorite company. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Sounds good. We'll look forward to that. Then thank you once yep. again. I appreciate it. Thank you it. very Enjoy much. The rest of the show. Uh, you too. Maniac! <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we've got a few people waiting so we can bring the builders on up here. Shout out to Classic Plastic Bricks once again for helping helping us uh, organize all these builders here. So, yeah. your new producer. That's right, new producer. You know, I don't know what we do without you. <laughs> How much you paying him? <laughs> the big bucks. He only gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> am I get am I get paid brick or dollars? <laughs> we'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on. You guys can come on in closer. Get closer to the mic. I'll yeah. scoot over here. Okay. We want to make sure everybody can hear you. What you have to say about the models. Okay. So I love Hi, Mom. <laughs> I love what we've got here. So if you Thank want to you. start off by introducing yourself, then we'll talk about the build. So hi, I'm uh, the Brick Maniac on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, so basically, well, this is uh, just broke slightly there. It's okay. This is, That's what a, happens yeah. when you deal with Lego. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, it's a locomotive modeled after uh, Illinois Central Railroad 1518, right? And uh, th last year I did build one. I did build a particular locomotive, and I just thought, you know, I need I need to step up my game, right? So. I have custom rods on here, so those are those come from uh, trained bricks on Bricklink, and uh, I've got some nice valve gear on mm -hmm. there too. So, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So have that, and um, I mean, I want to say there's not much to it, but there kind of is. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's, there's a lot here. When, when you start, let's start at kind of the beginning with this model. So you, but you said this is based on a real life locomotive. Yeah. So okay. Illinois Central Railroad, fifteen eighteen. Uh, it's a Mikado, which is the 282. That's just a wheel configuration. So we have that. It has a Baker valve gear. That's just getting a little technical. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's what you need to, to build these detailed models like that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we got the um, domes on there as well. The bell is actually quite interesting. It's just, um, I don't know, this dome piece and then okay. a clip. And then we got a, I think this is a bucket handle. Sure, yeah. So, that's a great combination of parts for that. Yeah, I think it works pretty well. And then uh, the whistle actually is right there right and it actually kind of connects to the cab because that's the cord where i did remove the cord um because it was kind of getting in the way it's kind of an obstruction so but usually they'd be able to pull it and then that's how that's how the whistle would well make noise mm -hmm. so that's i mean that's pretty much it for the locomotive and the, the tender is fairly simple it just houses uh two motors and then a battery box inside of there um, it has a little light on the back. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. There's no power functions in there that I could uh, fit in there. I may get a, brink, uh, a blinky bricks light for that, but it's not really needed. And then this is just kind of the uh, coal bunker here where we connect to the cab of the uh, locomotive itself. So There you go. I like it. And then we've got a fellow train builder over here. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, so if you want to introduce yourself and then, and then tell us about what you brought. Oh. You want to switch places? Yeah, yeah, maybe you should. That's a good idea. There you go. That way we can see the, yeah. see the models better. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Okay, yeah. So as you talk about it, you can make sure you hold it up because that way everybody watching can see what you're talking about. So my name is Elijah Stewart. I build Lego trains. My Instagram name is Eli the Sniper, and my YouTube name is Spring Pop Games because my favorite. Five Nights at Freddy's character is Spring Trap. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, I the mo the engine that I modeled is a uh, Milwaukee Road 261, which is well the Milwaukee Road is my favorite railroad, and the one engine that they still have running that isn't scrapped is um, 261 here. So it has it's a 4A4 Northern. So uh, it has four wheels on the lead truck here and then eight driving wheels with also the custom rods that he has okay. on his not as, not as intricate though <laughs> yeah he does i don't have all those metal, gear parts. yeah sure. I don't, yeah and the trailing truck it has four wheels 
<laughs> I just I just broke it. Pieces come off easily. Yeah. <laughs> so when when you start building a model like this, you just kind of build from the the ground up and just and just move up. Yeah, I um start by building the um the base. Uh, oh, 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 what's going on here? I did. Do I detect so? What is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Weapon. Weapon. Rules <laughs> of no no the show. Built with weapon. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> I better get that back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll make its way back. But yeah, you were talking about how you built this here. Yeah, we start from the base up. Uh, I usually start with the driving wheels because that's probably the most difficult part on the base part of it. And then I go to the pilot wheels and then the trailing truck after that. If I move this Philly Brickfest man on top of the smokestack, <laughs> that's that's very dangerous. Don't try that. Never try that. Um. In the front here, we have the headlight. It doesn't light up, sadly, but it I like it a lot. It has um, these, I forgot what they're called, like pole pieces uh, connected to these clips. And I kind of just did an illegal building technique with by bending the pole pieces into the clips. And, and that gives it the railing down. I, I will try to tile this up here, but... <laughs> Because th this kid complains too much. <laughs> you always, always a critic. <laughs> there yeah. you go. No, yeah. I, that, that's great. So what kind of inspired you to start building trains versus, you know, there's all sorts of themes and genres. Um, Your Lego conventions, what, what led you to train building? Um, Him. Okay. The Brick Maniac, yeah, so, definitely. And, um, did I? That's yeah. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> Well, no, you didn't know that. Uh, okay. And then Kelly Park, Glenn sure. Holland, and Owen Meshker, they all build Lego trains. Legendary train builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tony Sava. There you all, go. All, all the guys. They, they, yeah, yeah. Everyone who's in the hobby. And I would definitely recommend this to you if you like trains. This can get very expensive. <laughs> and what kind of motor are we going to use next time? Um, okay. like, <laughs> all 11. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never. <laughs> Okay, well, great. Thanks for bringing these models over, you guys. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank, great, great meeting great you. Me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Great chatting with you. We'll see who we can bring up next then. <laughs> yeah, hopefully a weapon builder. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the chat looking like? I hope you guys are enjoying the interviews and you're able to, I know that the internet might not be the greatest here at the show, so I hope it's coming through clear for you and everything. Got the next builder coming up here. Some great models to display. Thank you. There you go. Nice and close to the mic. Whenever be I want everybody to be able to hear what you're saying. Here we go. Yeah, so you can that? start off by introducing yourself, and then we'll talk about what you brought here. Hi, my name is Susie Lenchner, and I'm here from Ontario, California. That's quite a distance you traveled from. <laughs> it is. A little over 3,000 miles, I think. Was it difficult to transport? Because you've got a few small things here, but then a much larger display at the show. So was it difficult to transport all that? How did that work for you? Well, my husband designed some custom boxes that look like giant Lego bricks. Okay. And each one has their shelves are adjustable, so they're set for the exact height of the section that goes in there. So we actually... Um, slide it in on the plywood shelf, slide it out, slide it off onto the table. The scout camp generally sets up in about 20 minutes. Wow, yeah, so you've got it down to science at this point. <laughs> We've done it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, so then let's talk about, start with the mini figs here and you can hold these up and, and show the camera. And what, what are those? Oops, these are our sig figs. Oops. Um, that's what we look like in our actual scout uniforms. Okay. Uh, with all the knots we've earned and our wood badge neckerchiefs. That's the training in Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. So we've both been leaders for more than 20 years. Uh, he was a Boy Scout when he was a kid. I, of course, was not. <laughs> I'm so excited that girls can't join now mm -hmm. because I would have loved to have been a Boy Scout. Girl Scouts was terribly boring for me. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, that's been the inspiration for a lot of the builds and stuff you have to show that it's kind of your... your uh, well, that's the time you guys work we have three sons, and right. we're still leaders. We've been leaders for more than 20 years. All three of our boys are Eagle Scouts. Yeah. So uh, two started in Cub Scouts. Um, at one point, I was Cub Master of a Cub Scout pack, and my husband was Scout Master of the Scout Troop at the same time. 
Um, people used to refer to us as that scout family. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a lot of the Lego building families here. It's yes, like you're, exactly. You get known for that. <laughs> well, because we worked at the scout camp. And my kids practically grew up at Hopewell Valley Scout Ranch. And um, it's just, it's a really fun program and we just love it. And when I became disabled, I, I can't do everything I used to do. It's harder for me to go camping. I can't go hiking. Sure. So the way I share my love of scouting is to build with Lego, which I also love. So it's putting my two passions together. And I've created this Boy Scout summer camp and we've taken it all over the Western region. Um, in 2016, the national annual planning meeting for Boy Scouts of America was held in San Diego. We were invited to show the camp there. And the people who attend that are the key three or the head three people of every council in the country plus the head of BSA, the three top people in BSA. So um, they really liked it. The training division liked it so much because we built it, because we've been leaders for so long, we know BSA policy. So we built it exactly following BSA policy. For example, at the rifle range, all of the scouts have eye protection and ear protection. Wow, and you're able to get the minifig parts and everything to be able to, to build that accurately. Exactly, and then every tent has two buckets in front of it one filled with sand and one filled with water in, in case of fire, which is BSA policy. Yeah. So um, bicyclists and horseback riders all wearing helmets. You know, th it was really closely. So they want to make a movie and show it as a training film. Okay, like a stop motion sort of thing? Exactly. Almost? So that, because, you, you know, even adults, you show them a list of rules, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. But you show them a Lego movie, they are going to remember what they saw, right? Right, exactly. It's much more memorable when you see it through Lego. <laughs> exactly. So we're working on setting up a um, someone to do stop action for us and go through all the BSA policies and rules for camping. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfect, because, yeah. And then you got this other model here, so talk about what this is. This is cool. This is a Boy Scout. Um, we go to uh, Scoutoramas and Scout Expos all over uh, Southern California, Nevada, um, uh, San Francisco, all over, Stephen even to Oregon and Seattle. And um, this was built when we did the San Diego show. A friend of mine named Miro Dudas, who is an incredible builder, lives in San Diego. He built this to go with the camp. And then uh, when we displayed it down there, it was a lug event. And then he gave it to me afterwards. So I think it's really cool. His arms move, his head turns. Oh, wow. And he can sit down. Visibility and everything. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> so I love it. And um, I just sent him pictures of a scouting uniform and he came up with this which is phenomenal one thing i noticed i like that is the yellow chair piece oh there i love that head. isn't That's that cool <laughs> yeah he, he just did a really excellent job on it so mm -hmm. um, we always put that out and of course we credit him with it it has a little sign that has his name on it okay it's the only thing i didn't build and set. <laughs> Very impressive. So yeah, as you said, you've got a, a massive layout that we, we definitely can't show here because it's so big. And, but if, if you're at the show, you can check it out. So you bring that to a lot of shows. Uh, do you have plans for that in the future and kind of what you'll where you'll take that in the future or expanding on it at all? Um, well, it grows every year. <laughs> I still have some sections. I finally got the pieces for like the swimming pool and the handicrafts and pioneering to add those sections. And if you're not a scout, you probably don't know what those are, but. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's, it's, still, uh, it's still cool stuff to look at. And um, we generally, we go to BrickCon every year in Seattle because our son lives in Washington. And um, now we've started going to um, Brick's Cascade. Uh, they liked it there. And then we we're going this year to Rick Slopes in Utah, okay. which is a big scouting community up in Utah. So uh, we expect to have a lot of uh, people um, looking at it there. Um, we're not taking it to Bricks by the Bay this year. We're taking our Civil War and our State Fair instead. Um, but we are taking it on the way home. We, well, we already showed it in in Alpine, Virginia. Or, I'm sorry, Alpine, New Jersey, at a uh, Boy Scout camp called Alpine Scout Ranch, Scout camp, Scout camp. And then we're showing it on the way home at a Scout camp in Knoxville. And then there's a possibility we'll be stopping at the Boy Scout National Training Center in Cimarron, New Mexico, and showing it there as well, Very, which is very yeah. exciting no, that's, that's for a scout impressive. leader. That's like totally exciting <laughs> going to. To film on to show it, <laughs> <laughs> so it gets around for sure. Then that, oh, it that's, does. That's really great. So 
Yeah, that's very impressive. So for people who maybe can't make it to a show in person to see it, is there anywhere online that they can check it out? Do you have photos yes, online? Yes, I do have a website. It's called brickbuiltbyme.com. Okay. And I have a lot of photos. Uh, there will be more once we get back from this trip. I just put it up really fast so that I can tell people where to go look at it. But it does have some close-ups of the camp. And when we get home, I will be putting a close-up of each area so they can see that it also has my Civil War mock and my State Fair mock on there as well. Yeah. Well, that's very neat. I appreciate you coming over here and chatting with me. It was great talking with you. Well, thank you thank very, you very much. much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, thank you. I will. Yeah. Make sure to check everything out online because it's, it's some awesome builds. <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> We have uh, the next builder ready here, so we'll move these over here and get the ne get the next builder in. Hope you're con enjoying the look at some of the great builds and uh, builders that we have here at Philly Brick Fest. This is a lot of fun. I know I enjoy doing these new live streams here. We aren't able to do this at, at mini shows because there's not always the room and space and setup and everything. So this is a lot of fun for us to be able to, to do some live content at the shows. And, and not just the, the builder interviews that take us a while to get get out. Got the next builder ready here, if you want to have a seat. All right. So if you want to introduce yourself to everyone and then talk about what you have. All right, everyone, my name's Matt, otherwise known as with my channel, Matt's Mox. You should also find me on Instagram of the same name. It's the only one out there. There and, you go. Well, you know, I came here to Philly. I'm a big train builder, but I also mm -hmm. build buildings especially ones I've know of and seen. So everything that I built, there's a real life equivalent out there that you could actually see in person, but they're a little bit changed up. <laughs> That's fine. So what do you have for us here? Showing you today is the main station for my city because I'm a main train builder. I built a little bit of buildings. This is my mo most detailed building that you could actually see in real life. I forget the exact location, but it's in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And it currently serves as the station to my Lego city attitude city even has the name on it so there is a real version of it and the best part is it's fully detailed i know i left the stickers from the original set on it, but i did that for the heck of it i'll show the inside first take off the roof there's a little light yeah and we'll start off with the second floor because it's the smallest we got i'll show you here this is a quarters for someone working here so it's got the full thing there's actually a spiral staircase. Oh, that's great. So you can get from one floor to another that way. One of the very few buildings in my city that actually has a staircase. And the figures are, are very proud of it. <laughs> there you go. Get this roof roof section off here. Yeah, it's kind of a poorly designed roof. It works. <laughs> but we have the tile work, a bay window. And lots of other features in and outdoors. We have fully tiled flooring. Only building like it in my entire city to have mm -hmm. fully tiled. Green and red. Yeah, you can show that to the camera there. Oh, it's yeah. a, it's it's a like very. A <laughs> if you could stand stand it for an hour, then you could do anything. <laughs> got a little bench because I mean you gotta sit somewhere. Mm -hmm. Of course, since it's tile, it's tile figures will slip all over the place. That's why you don't see any in here. And to show the other room, just have to take off front of the bay window. So this is the main off. You you have a small area between that you can get your tickets. Small little ticket area. You can see in there. And of course the main office, which has our spiral staircase. That was a pain in the neck to build. It looks like it. Yeah, you got to get the right pieces to spiral and everything. It falls apart every single time if you try to touch it. <laughs> so there we go. And there's a little desk with an office lamp, telegraph, and a cup. Mm -hmm. so every build has to have a cup. If sure. It didn't, it's, a great, it's a great little train station here. So when you set this up, is this part of a larger train display generally? Or Yes. Okay. This would be, this is actually in the middle of my largest build, which is Attitude City itself, which I technically would consider a build mm -hmm. since it's all a bunch of parts going together. Sure. Yeah. Very neat. Well, thanks for bringing that over. Whoa, you... wait, wait, wait. My, my, my crack research <laughs> team just told me something. What? What's today? What, what's the date? April twenty second. April twenty second. Um, hold on one second. So, what's happening on April twenty second? 
my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> what a great place to spend spend your birthday at a Lego convention. That's fantastic. <laughs> it is. Very neat. It's well, also yeah. a great place for the roof to completely come <laughs> apart. Not, but it's Lego, so you can fix it. Well, that's, that's great. True. Well, I appreciate you chatting with me. Happy birthday. And if you want to remind Thanks, people man. once again where they can find your stuff online if they want to see some more of it. If you want to see more of my mocks, which are mostly trains and, well, there's also videos of other stuff, but mostly trains, it is Matt's Mocks on YouTube and on Instagram as well, because that's all I have social media-wise. If you're looking for me on Twitter or Facebook, you're not going to find anything. Just sadness. <laughs> that's, that's fine, you know? You, right. you don't want to stretch yourself too thin, so right. thank you very much. Appreciate welcome, it. Man. Enjoy the rest of the show. Me too. And next year I'll have even bigger and better builds. Awesome. We'll look forward to it. All right. So, once again, so, some more great builders here. We've got Classic Plastic in the Brick Daniels right, shirt. Right, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you, you didn't sing Happy Birthday. I Duh. didn't. No. I don't think anyone wants to hear me sing. Yeah. <laughs> it's copyrighted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. It's like me singing to someone. <laughs> But this has been great. Thank you very much for the help on bringing the builders up here. Well, listen, I really you know, appreciate you, it. You the show's a little stale and old. The same old questions, same old. Hey. I thought we'd mix it up a little bit. There you go. So you do this because you aren't really a fan. I oh, know. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan with way too much time at the show. That's true. So, you're, you're so worst what, we haven't heard much from what you do at the show here and what, what your background with Lego is. So tell people about yourself because you're just, you know. Running in the background here. Running in the background, yeah. Uh, I normally I'm a Lego vendor, but uh, this year I'm hanging out with uh, my friends from. Hold on, another plug. Steel City Lug. Hey, Josh. What's so where's Steel City Lug base? What's your guess? <laughs> no, I, for people who aren't familiar with it, Pittsburgh. you need to tell them. There you go. There's a lot of people who won't know that. <laughs> good point. Good point. Good point. We probably have half our audience who doesn't even live in the U.S. here, so <laughs> they're going to know that. Okay, gotcha. Good point. Things I don't I know. Like the, I like that brick, though, by the way. That design's very cool. Yeah. Well, that's their logo. Okay. They were nice enough to invite me to display with Dan and Will behind me. Good guys. Perfect. So how about I flip the script? Sure. On you. Why not? Why not? So what do you think of the show? Compare this to some of your other shows. Is this more social friendly, social media friendly kind of? It is. So that's, I think I mentioned this yesterday, but I'd say that's what sets this apart from the other shows that we go to is like how big like the, the YouTubers that come out, like social media people in general, it seems like there's a lot more of that type of community there here. And so you, you get a lot of those types of people, which is, is, it definitely creates kind of a different dynamic. I like it, it's, it's interesting because it's, you get a lot of that community for a lot of people kind of meeting that are usually talk online and kind of meeting in person here. So well, I know a lot of the YouTubers who were like, like met for the first time they talk online it's like the first time meeting face to face right. and they were all excited for sure but some great builds here as well yeah, yeah always some fantastic stuff on display at this show you so. guys got video of the uh boy scouts right we yeah we should we showed that actually at other conventions the bricks cascade and stuff okay, we right. that's that awesome build. yeah that's awesome that build. is well you got one more man up here okay thank you very much Another builder here, so thank you for joining me. Feel free to get nice and close to the mic so everyone can hear you. You can introduce yourself and show us what you got. All right, so my name is Vision Bricks, and well, my real name is Kirk Wilson, but I go by the name of Vision Bricks. <laughs> uh, I have with me over here three vignettes. Okay. Uh, the first vignette I call Johnny Thunder Remastered, and basically it's based off of the original classic theme of Johnny Thunder that Lego did a while back, and I just basically used the Han Solo torso and the Tony Stark face because I figured it kind of matched that a little bit. You can just make your show it to the camera and that way everyone right. watching can see so, it. There you go. I kind of have the Tony Stark face over here, this nice uh, blue hair piece, and then I have a dog over here. And I wanted to make Hold it up there, yeah. a lot of shrubbery and rock work for the mountains over here. And I have a light on two of the 8x16 plates right there. Then the next vignette that I have is a Batman vignette in front of a Gotham bank. We have the Penguin running off with money. And then we also have Green Arrow in the back and two Gotham PD officers. And the next one, this was a bit of a last minute mock that I made for the convention. This is a Captain America versus Red Skull and a Hydra Soldier over here. So I used a lot of the one by one uh, sand green bricks that I got from work and some one by one brick with studs on the side. I put it in the shape of a square, and then that allows me to add a tiling effect there. That's, I don't know if it's been used before, that idea to do it like this, but I figured it would be a cool way to 
get the stunt technique. Yeah, that's really there. good. Like, can I take a closer look at that? So, yeah. how, talk about more how you achieve that and what that tiling is like there. All right, so this is basically one by one brick whip set on the side. Okay. And then I formed it in the shape of a square. Some of them, like this one right here, have this one facing up and not attached all the way, so I can attach a minifigure. Mm -hmm. And then I also added the grill pieces right here so that I could give it the smoothness right there so that when I place it there, it has a tighter uh, space right there so that it doesn't fall out too easily. And sure, that's a that's right a great there. design. It gives kind of that gap, gap yeah, tile for Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have, now this one I really do like is based off of the original character Tintin, off of the books or comic books in both like the classic TV show and the movie. So I did a mosaic of that. And then I decided last minute to do a mini land sale figure. <laughs> so that goes really neat together. And it's on a 32 by 32 uh, base plate. And then the last mock that was my main project that I worked on is this modern style, this Californian style modern house right here. Oh, and very nice. So the roofs come off. There's three sections. This is the larger section right here. So it has a sunroof right here. You have two solar panels. And then this is these are the other two roofs. The smaller section has a Nico roof up there. And then the other section has an, another eco roof mm -hmm. there. On the interior. And make sure you hold it up. This is the kitchenette area over here. We also have a kitchen island over here. We have rock a sick thing over here. And then another First and six big over here in this chair near the kitchen island. And then we have a plant in the corner right here. Also, there's the patio in the front and then the living room area. And in the back, that's around, we have the bedroom. So it has a nice modern look to it, a nice modern uh, shelf over here. And then we have the bed, some artwork in the corner. And that leads into the bathroom where there's a nice walk-in shower, a uh, sink over here, and then a toilet. And on the side is the deck area where we have a nice checkered pattern of dark tan and dark red with a pool. We have a grill over here. The grill does light up, but unfortunately, the light is actually dim, so it doesn't work anymore. And then I have a nice palm tree. And then the last mock that I did bring are these Micro Tron Life Cycles, which are based off of the recently released uh, Tron Legacy Life Cycle set. And Brick Rose UK actually responded on this video, and they said, they emailed me and saying that they were actually working on micro versions of the Tron light cycles. And they sent me a picture of it. And I'm like, oh, that's really funny because they were like, we were working on it and we never showed this to anyone. <laughs> and so they were like, what a coincidence. And that's pretty much it. So that's what I do um, here. This is my first convention, actually. Wow, so this awesome. Is, um, Congratulations. Exciting. What have you thought about the, the show so far? It's, it's really great. I actually want to come next year for 2019. Definitely. And definitely. Yeah, all, all, all the live conventions are fantastic. Yeah. So any, any of them you can make it to. Yeah, uh, definitely. Any that are near you, I definitely encourage you. That's what a been some of you or anything that's kind of surprised you about the convention experience or anything like that? Let's see. Um, the only thing I would say is that, is that it doesn't seem to be that many people here as the previous years. Uh, I was expecting to see like a few others here that didn't get to come this year, so that was the only disappointment. But other than that, it's overall exciting. Um, I really do enjoy like meeting different people, getting to see different mocks, because it basically is, it helps towards inspiration and getting different ideas that you can share with others and to be all around this inspiration to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely the, the attendance can kind of uh, fluctuate a little bit depending on yeah. the year. Sometimes people can make it, sometimes they can't. Yeah. So uh, it all depends. But yeah, it's always a fantastic experience and I'm sure lots of inspiration for you as a builder to yeah. see, see other stuff here. Yeah, definitely. Very neat. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And before you leave, do you want to remind people where they can find your stuff online if they want to see some more of your all work? Right. So I do have an Instagram, which is Vision Bricks. I also have a YouTube channel by the name of Vision Bricks where I showcase all my mocks. Some, most of the mocks that you guys just saw here are there. I have video, full, fully detailed videos on them. And some of the other mocks that I do have aren't available, are available on the channel, but not in person. Uh, also, I do have a Twitter by the same name. It's at, uh, Vision Bricks underscore, Vision underscore Bricks. And that's it. There you go. Thank you very much. Sure, appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. You too. Once again, some fantastic builders here. It's really a pleasure getting to chat with all of the, the talented, creative builders at these shows. Uh, it's always amazing. I'm blown away by the, the work that everyone brings here. It's so cool. It's from the, the smaller vignettes all the way up to the, the big layouts. It's, it's really fantastic. So I hope everyone is enjoying the work out there. And I'll take a look at the chat. Once again, any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat.
happy birthday, so shout outs there. Do we have our produ executive producer back with us? Yeah, <laughs> I'm back. Uh, yeah, I got one more. And okay. I, I think there's one other, but it might take a minute or two. That's that's perfectly fine. Yes. All right, now say something interesting. That was good. That was good. That was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that was. That's very entertaining. Oh, here we go. Right here. All right. <laughs> Okay, fantastic little micro train here. Make sure we can see that. Get the builder up here. Thank here you very go. much for joining me. I love yeah, this little no model here. So if you want to start off, uh, move, so, you can start by introducing yourself to everyone uh, and then make sure you talk about that. I'm Samuel Fisher, uh, Master Builder Productions on YouTube. Um, so I built this for my winter village uh, late last year, maybe like eight hours worth of work. But I love this little thing because of all the little details and parts usage. So use a mixed little toothpiece up here for the uh, cow catcher, mm -hmm. ice cream cone for the uh, for the smoke. Perfect. Yeah, that's out. a great piece for that. And then I use some mixed little toothpieces over here for just decoration and just throughout the thing, my micro bases, and then just. All sorts of just little odd pieces like ski poles. Just, it just makes it like a fun little build and just fits with the color scheme that you would associate with Christmas and stuff. So. Right. And so is this based on any of the Lego train Christmas trains, the Lego no. or just kind of your own design? Just my own design. Okay. Fantastic. And what are the mini figs you have in there? Uh, so Brick Fest Live figure. And then Kevin Hinkle. Customized <laughs> Kevin Hinkle. I'm yes. Got to have Kevin Hinkle. And then my neighbor in there. Her uh, sig fig, even though she doesn't really know what that is, but <laughs> you know it's cool to include it anyway. Yeah. So when you're building at this small a scale, was it difficult to find the pieces you wanted to use to capture the yeah. details? Like I was trying to figure out if I would go wider or just keep it like how it was, and but I think it came out pretty good with just being four wide for most of it, and it looks pretty cool. And it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So. Do you normally build at kind of this smaller scale, or do you have other, other oh, types I got of builds? A, I got a winter village that, like, this was like a one of a kind, kind of more smaller scale, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Where's Kevin Hinkle? Right here. Shout, shout out to Kevin Hinkle there. He's actually at this show, so. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Hinkle, Lego superstar. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. <laughs> so, you know, another reason I wanted him up here? Do you remember the discussion we had about the bowling? The bowling, yeah, okay. So yesterday, for people who weren't here yesterday, let's let's remind well, they everyone. They can watch yesterday's episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, where did they find you? There you go. So uh, this was the builder who won us the game. Yeah. Okay, so you're the, you're the the pro builder while they were bowling. The year. Yeah. <laughs> Built the uh, Technic uh, truck set, and uh, it's pretty fun. I mean, first Technic set, so I was kind of surprised they actually won. <laughs> Is that the new Mack truck set? Or no, what is, okay, uh, what is smaller one. The okay, orange that's and a black big, one. I, that's a big deal. Yeah, I was like, that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, hey, remind me. Who had the high score? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we have it on video. Here we have it on video. <laughs> you remind people of his high score. No, never, never. never. <laughs> what? I'm so modest. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. That's the first word I think of when I think of you. Oh. Yeah. Well, usually other people use a, uh, another word we can't use on the air. That's true. We don't want to use that. We're keeping it PG. <laughs> That's very good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. you guys with me. Thank you for Before your you time. Leave, you want to remind people where they can find your work? Um, I'm over here or on YouTube as Master Builder Productions and Mini Fig Mocks and Beyond on Instagram. So, yeah. Great. Check me out. Thank you very thank much. You for your Enjoy time. The rest of the show. Thanks. Get the next builder moving in here. Uh, bigger display here. Good All stuff. right, your job is to make sure he says something interesting. Oh, that's going to be difficult. I got nothing to say, right? <laughs> make sure we get this all the way in here where the camera can see it tough because it's so it's a larger set so there you go okay well you can start off by introducing yourself and then tell us what you brought 
Hello everyone, I'm Brian from Built From Bricks and I have part of my Lego mock, this is part of my zoo, this is the Lego Aquarium. Okay. So, really cool building that I designed. It's designed after the New England Aquarium in Boston. They have this large cylindrical tank in the center of the building. It kind of travels up three floors. So I have that in there and then there's a couple, I know with the camera you won't see a lot, there's the jellyfish tank which is from the Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut. So there's a little bit of stuff from all of the of the aquarium, like this this part from the aquariums that I've been to. Sure. There's stuff that's fun. There's a touch tank inside where the kids can go to and play with the starfish and crabs and stuff like that. So fantastic. What are some of the other details in here? You got some of the animals that you have in there and stuff. So I have the animals inside, but also down in here, like especially for the kids. So I asked the kids where does where does SpongeBob live? And they go, He lives in a pineapple. So in here, there's a pineapple under the sea. <laughs> yes. So there's, there's stuff like that you hide in like details and kids, they eat it, they love it. I like it too, it's funny. And Patrick's in here, we have a soft fish, we have- Turn it this way a bit so the kid, camera showing it, there you go. So you can see inside, it's lit up right now with a little power pack and okay. some LED lighting, which makes it so much, it looks so much cooler and the light with light lit up and everything like that. It's fun, it's fun to build, it's fun to show it off and see the reaction from everybody. And, you know, you do a little more like with sand, you, know, you want sand, you put loose, you know, it's a bunch of loose tan studs. It looks like a, like a flowing floor as opposed to like just a flat plate or something like that. So exactly. Yeah. That, that looks really great. One other cool thing is the, and I don't know if they'll see it, but walls, the walls of the, um, of the building have an ocean wave in it. It just okay. kind of breaks up the, you know, here and it's over here. It's because it breaks up that big blue wall. Right, and that's I, a detail, kind of interesting design to it. Exactly, because otherwise it's a big, boring blue brick wall. <laughs> so, and then, of, what do we have on top here? On top, this is just a set. I didn't design this set. This is one of the underwater, you know, sets, deep sea sets, and it's just something. I don't have a roof really for the top of the aquarium, so I put this up there just as a little fun thing to put up mm -hmm. with with um, President Business on top with his thirty-seven dollar coffee cup. That's what it was. They thirty, you know. Starbucks was a $37. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Coffee's very expensive there. <laughs> in, in, yeah, in Lego world, coffee's really expensive. Because they don't, you know, they don't drink a lot of coffee, so. I like your, is it like a battle damage shark back there? Oh, we, so we have a, um, I can pull this out. It's lit up. It's a um, little zombie shark there. He's apparently eating a chicken. This comes from the, the Pirates of the Caribbean, that okay. si Silent Mary set. Yeah. And I like the shark. I thought it was like kind of a cool display part. You walk into the aquarium, you see what a inside and outside of a shark look like with this the cage shark i love that so this is part of a talk about i know we, we can only show this section but we'll talk about your larger zoo in general what, what's that like so in the zoo i have there's nine base plates they're all this size 48 by 48 studs and i have stuff in there from there's a polar bear exhibit it's modeled after the zoo in ohio then i have a penguin exhibit which is modeled after the in the new england aquarium again we have a little bear exhibit we have there's dinosaurs in there. There's a, if you check it out, there's a dinosaur feeding a... The raptors are in there, and they're about to be fed some a cow. There's a, cow, there's a black and white cow. Drop a little hit of the, the SpongeBob in here. Yeah. We have other hidden things there. So you have pork chop from our, the ham from Toy Story mm -hmm. with some eggs next to them. So we have ham and eggs. And there's, there's, there's little stuff like that in there, which is it makes it really... It's fun, mm -hmm. especially with the kids. Like, they point out every little thing. I built a little... It's pretty cool. I could have showed you a little hamburger stand. So it's it looks like a giant hamburger, but there's a cook inside, and he's cooking up some you know hamburgers for customers. So just little little things like that. I have more plans for the zoo expansion, and you know trying to keep it going. I get a lot of on the YouTube channel. We get a lot of requests like when I want to see a new zoo update, new zoo update, new zoo update. City and city and zoo. The, everybody loves those. Yeah. The zoo's fun because you don't see a lot of them. You know, there's a couple other channels that I've done. I think. You know, one particular that's done a, a zoo, and I don't know too many others, but... Right, you don't see a lot of Lego zoos. I've seen a couple of shows where we're building to bring it, but not a ton. So that, yeah. that's cool. It's a unique building. Well, thanks, for, thanks for bringing that over. I think this is a fantastic design, and it's great chatting with you. You too. Thank you very much. So before you go, remind people where they can find your builds online. So you can find us at YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram, at Built From Bricks. Also, we stream live every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we have a different show each week. And what I always say when we're done watching the show is thanks for watching and what have you built today? There you go. Remember, remember to always build on. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming over and chatting. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, I think we're getting close to wrapping up the live stream for today. Check the chat here real quick.
Lots of, lots of good stuff. Somebody said they subscribed, so we appreciate that. Awesome. <laughs> See if, see if uh, any of our producers come back with anyone else here before we shut down the stream. Looks, looks like we have someone headed this way, so keep going for a few more minutes. We get the get the builder. How's it going? Good to, hey. good to see you. <laughs> so. If you want to introduce yourself to everyone out there and let everybody know, and then we'll, we'll chat about the show here. Okay. Hey, my name's Joseph Olson. I'm also known as Brickzar on YouTube. I love vintage Lego. I've been a Lego collector uh, for over 40, almost 45 years now. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> That's fantastic, though, that you've been able to be, uh, be around for that long and collect for, collect for all those years. Yes. I've never had a dark age. <laughs> I, I love a lot of the vintage stuff and... Uh, I've been working on collecting a lot of uh, Lego trains from over the year. That's my favorite theme is the trains. And, mm -hmm. um, That's great. So a lot of people out there watching probably familiar with your channel. You've been doing stuff on YouTube for quite a while. A great, great channel you build up over there at Brickstar. But for, for anyone who maybe hasn't seen your stuff before, kind of talk about what you generally do over there, some of the, the videos and the types of content you make. Okay. I'm not a very organized person. <laughs> But uh, I featured, uh, in the early days, I featured a lot of vintage set reviews because I had a lot of things in my collection already. I thought it'd be nice to show the younger people. Sometimes I would compare old sets to the, the new ones today. The, in fact, I got the, uh, I want to show you this later if you got time, but I have the very first Lego fire station. Wow. It came out in 1958. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I like showing, I like to show people things that maybe they don't see on the other channels. It might not necessarily be things that are popular with the kids. Uh, but I like a lot of the weird and unusual things. I know you probably had uh, Maniacs of Bricks on earlier. Yeah. Me and him, we like, or him and I, we like a lot of the same things. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 really great. Yeah. So then you said you said you've been collecting Lego for so long here. Talk about maybe some of the changes you've seen with like the Lego company and the Lego community over those years, and kind of how it's evolved, and some of the some of the things you've noticed and the way it's changed to kind of the point we're at today. Uh, I used to believe that Susan Williams was a real person when I was a kid in the, uh, the pamphlets that came with the sets. It, it'd be signed by Susan Williams. I, th I thought that was a real person. So I had no knowledge of like a community. I had no knowledge of that there were other people out there that liked Lego. I actually discovered that uh, one through going to train shows. Okay. Uh, the local lug down in Georgia, Dixie lug, they would show up at train shows. Uh, that's my first experience knowing what a lug was and then with youtube i started learning that oh there are these other crazy people out there like me that love this hobby but uh, lego over the years they've just gotten so more detail there's so many different types of elements i kind of like the simple things i like some of the old hobby style sets they were just use basic elements to build uh, but you can build some, so much better stuff today <laughs> with what, what they give you. And, um, I, and I, one thing I love about Lego is they've always kept it about the kids. I know it's a falls. We push them to, to give us, you know, like trains like Penlug makes or uh, the roller coasters. And, Crazy detailed yeah, or big stuff. Yeah. yeah, but it's still about the kids. And they, I love how the, the instructions actually got simpler. When I look at some of the vintage things that I, I like, I have a hard time building them because no, it's they're... true. You look at stuff from like the seventies and eighties, and it's like what? <laughs> they even went like two steps and one. I'm like, what? What just happened? And there'll be a piece behind that you can't see. I'm like, how do you build that? But uh, so they, they've made the every famous. I'm not famous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you were saying that. Yeah, so they they they've always kept it simple for the kids. They. Uh, the numbered bag system, we didn't have that growing up. And just that's one thing about Lego is they're always about kids. Mm -hmm. As much as I say, Falls want things, they've always they stay true to the core value. So, how long have you been involved in kind of the online Lego community? Because like, I know that the online portion is a little more recent than like the, the larger Lego community as a whole. Uh, pretty much since I'd say 2013. I started my okay. channel in 2012. Uh, but it was in early part of 2013 that I discovered Chad from 
your, your creative friends. Um, then that got me interested in going, uh, meeting other people, got me interested in going to the fairs. I went to Brick Fair, Alabama in 2014, thir- no, 2013 was my first Brick Fair. And then also went in 2014. And that's when I started discovering things like this, these conventions. Mm-hmm. And it's really neat with YouTube. Is And you've seen it with all your travels now that you've been able to do, just going out and seeing this whole other world of people instead of just being confined to your one little area. I was alone most of my life in this Lego hobby. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't have friends that were into it like I was. Um, no, it's so true, though. That's an excellent point you make about how community is such a big part of, of Lego building in general. And once you can get together with other like-minded builders, you get inspiration and ideas from them, and then also, you know, interact and meet new people online, YouTube or however it is, mm-hmm. like, or whatever the site might be that people use, it's a great way to, to meet people and then come to shows and get to meet them in person and do stuff like that. So yeah. so that's true. Yeah, I think for me, the, the longer I do this, the more years we spend traveling all over and interviewing people. It's just, it becomes more and more about the people and and the, the builds are fantastic and everything, but I think that goes in the background with the fantastic Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, that, and that's what, every, every time somebody asks me, what's your favorite thing about this, it's people. Mm-hmm. It's always the people. And when it comes to the building, I get kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> it, uh, that's, a, that's the negative for me. It's not, it's not really a negative, but. When I look at all the great things that people make, I'm like, oh, I can never do that. Right. It can be intimidating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's still, I enjoy it. And I enjoy seeing it. And that, everybody's always so nice about, I was just over looking at some other people's stuff. I hadn't had much of an opportunity to get around. And going around and seeing the things and the people wanting to talk about it and sh- explain what the motivation was behind it and what they were thinking. Um, oh, J- Joseph. Over there on the way on the other side, he showed me a thing that he proposed. He built that he proposed to his wife. What? He built this big thing, uh, and it was like I put the ring in here, and I was like, "That was a great story. Yeah. I really enjoyed it." Mm-hmm. That's right, incorporating the hobbies and stuff. Yeah, there. <laughs> that is really great. So, for people who might be at other shows, maybe want to meet you. Will you be at other shows this year besides Philly? Unfortunately, I have a full time job. <laughs> that should get in the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, unless I get fired. <laughs> We don't want that to happen. Yeah, I would love to go to the show in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Brick uh, World. Yeah, Brick fantastic World. show. But probably the next show that I'm planning on going to would be Brick Fair, Alabama in 2019. Okay. Wait, what's the next year? Yeah, 2019. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Alabama's a, a fun show. You know, it's not as big as like the, mm-hmm. the uh, some of the other Brick Fair shows like Virginia, mm-hmm. but it's still, it's, it's got some great builds that always show up there every year. And it's, an, it's nice to go to some more of the like low key shows that don't overwhelm you with a massive space and everything. I agree, and I, I would, I would, I mean, I would go to more. It's just a matter of getting the time off. And Alabama's close to me. I live in Georgia. Okay. I saw when y'all went down to Atlanta Brick Company. Right. Saw, oh man, they were there. They. I wish I could have gone down there the same day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we were just like past. Uh, that was fun. Before, very often. I, it's it's on the you? south side of Atlanta. I'm up on the north okay. side, so I don't. I haven't really. I've never been. There. But your wow. video was my first time I got <laughs> you to gotta see make this it in there. <laughs> Well, good stuff. Yeah, well, it was great chatting Thank with you. you. I appreciate you coming on. over here. And so, yeah, once again, remind people, uh, Brickzar, find, where, where can they find you online? I, my main YouTube channel, Brickzar. I also do other things, non-Lego related, on Trains Are Fun and Brickzar Toys. But, um, yeah, I, I diversified a little bit. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank yeah, you. enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Okay, so I think that is about wrapping it up for us here. It's about, it's about to wrap up. It's about, I really appreciate you helping us out with this. Do I, Thank do I get you very a few much. more words? Yes, go All ahead. Right, well, now, if I'm going to get in trouble and I got to go home tonight. Hi, Julie, love you. <laughs> Second thing, next time you, you stream, be afraid, be very afraid that I might show up. That's true, you never know when you might come out of, come out of the darkness where he hides generally. <laughs> So yeah, shout out to Classic Plastic Bricks for helping us out with this and organizing the builders. I hope everyone enjoyed the live stream here. It's always fun to just sit down and have some people to come up and chat and do some of this live coverage of a show, get to talk to you guys while we're actually at the show. So I hope you enjoyed everything and we'll have much more coverage that we'll be posting in the coming weeks and months of our our more normal builder interviews and everything. So you can look forward to that as well. Thanks everyone for watching and we will see you soon.